Customers often ask us whether or not a particular piece of footwear is waterproof. It varies across the range, but the vast majority of the outdoor footwear that we sell will have waterproofness to it. In the majority of cases, that's likely to be the Gore-Tex membrane. You might see that flagged with either little fabric bags that reads Gore-Tex, or occasionally you'll see labels that read uh, GTX. Uh, and that can also be in the name of the shoe that you see when you're looking and browsing the range. The Gore-Tex membrane that works uh, as a layer that's sandwiched in the center of the boot. And the idea is that water in a vapor form can pass through that membrane. That's how the, the material is breathing. But water in a liquid form, which is a bigger particle or bigger molecule, can't pass through. So that's how your sweat that's evaporated off your foot can pass through the piece of footwear and breathe. But water from the outside, whether that's the rain, a splash in a puddle, isn't getting in, with the exception, obviously, of the large hole in the top. In order to maintain that performance, it's really important that we think about how we care for our products. We see loads of people who buy a great piece of footwear, but potentially through neglect, they're not getting the best performance from them. In front of me is a variety of different products that we could utilize to care for and maintain the best performance we can for the footwear. I'm gonna start with thinking about some of the principles behind it. With a traditional product made of leather, whether that's a shoe or a boot, we need to make sure that leather is staying hydrated. So various products on the market that we can use to hydrate the leather and keep it soft and supple. In this case, we've got Nick Wax's waterproof for wax for leather. This is on a sponge applicator. It's just a question of massaging it in. Super easy and quick to do, minimal mess. We've also got uh, Scarpa's own cream, which they recommend specifically for their boots. Comes in a little tub and then that's on that bigger sponge. You can cover ground a little bit quicker with that bigger one. It takes a little bit more massaging to get in there, but fundamentally the principles are the same in terms of keeping your leather hydrated as it starts to dry with UV exposure. If you've got a fabric-based boot, so and we use fabric to cover a myriad of things, generally what we're talking about is a variety of different materials that have been stitched and joined together. We can think about a general cleaning product, and again, that's on a sponge applicator. I can massage that in, little stiffer bristles there to give a scrubbing action to help lift and remove dirt. And it's that removal of the dirt that helps maintain the breathability. What we can then do is go for a spray-based product to apply to the outside of the garment, and that's gonna reapply that water repellent coating onto the outside of the footwear. The reason that's important is because if the outside of the footwear is sodden, moisture on the inside trying to escape, breathe, is really gonna struggle. It's got no incentive to leave if the outside's sodden. So although water isn't gonna be getting in, we can maximize that breathability with those repellency products that you see here in front of us. Another common question that we get asked would be about uh, cleaning the inside and potentially with odors. Good tip if you're in a situation where you've maybe stood in a, a deep bog, you've flooded the top of your footwear, the inside of the boot is sodden, or indeed chew, Remove the existing inner sole. That's gonna uh, allow this to dry independently and we're getting more air flowing through the footwear. That's gonna help that interior dry. Don't be afraid to get some warm water in there. So whether that is a tap head, I personally use the little shower head, give it a good blast, rinse out all those little bits of grit and detritus that build up in the inside. Not only is that gonna help in terms of the breathability, but you also protect the membrane, which is quite fragile. All those little sharp grits will uh, potentially uh, be cutting away the, the membrane inside the footwear. So if we can remove any of that detritus from the inside, giving it a rinse with some fresh water is a really good way of doing it. To dry it, a lot of people will suggest stuffing with newspaper. That's a really good starting point. I would suggest uh, taking some newspaper, shoving it through to the end, leaving it in for five or two, 10 minutes or so. Pull that now sodden paper out, repeat the process. Second time round, leave it that little bit longer and then pull it out. Third time, we're not gonna worry about the paper, we're just gonna let it breathe overnight. Temptation is to put it somewhere nice and hot. I'm always hesitant to suggest right in front of the radiator or the arg or the open fire because the heat from that will impact the glues that bond the shoe together. So warm and dry is fine, should dry quite comfortably overnight. If you do struggle with maybe an older piece of footwear that's picked up some odors from your feet, we do do some odor eliminators. You can give that a spritz on the inside and that will kill off a lot of that bacteria that's causing those odors. That's a really good one for sandals as well, which inevitably pick up more uh, perspiration in the absence of socks.